Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about class destructors in C++. We'll talk about their purpose, we'll talk about their syntax, and then we'll look at an example program using destructors in a class. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a class, which I'll call numbers. And numbers is going to have two private members. It's going to have a pointer and it's going to have a integer for holding the size of an array. So what we're going to do is we're going to dynamically allocate an array and we're going to store its memory address in P here. So our constructor is going to set that up for us, right? Remember what constructors do. They set up the object. They initialize an object for you. They set up everything that you need for your object to do its job. So in this case, it's going to be responsible for dynamically allocating an integer array because we want to have an object that maintains an integer array. So we're going to have it initialize size to say five, and then we'll do uh, P equals new int size. So in this way, our constructor is going to dynamically allocate a brand new array that can hold five elements, All right? Now, constructors set things up. What do destructors do? Destructors tear things down. They're the opposite of constructors. So they have a similar syntax in that you reuse the name of the class, but what's different is, is in front of the name, you prepend this tilde here, okay? And so anything that goes inside of your destructor is going to execute whenever the object gets destroyed. So when an object is created, the constructors automatically execute. When an object is destroyed, when it goes out of scope, then the destructor automatically executes. And any code that you put in there um, will automatically run. So this is where you place code to clean up after your object. So if we have a constructor that's going to dynamically allocate an array, then we're going to have a destructor that's going to be responsible for deleting that array, right? So destructors are used to clean up after the object. So any resource that needs to be taken care of before the object goes out of scope, before it's destroyed, put the code to clean up that stuff in your destructor. Maybe you need to close a file, uh, say, maybe you need to delete dynamically allocated memory like we're doing in this example. The destructor is for that. So this is our public interface and we've got a constructor and we've got a destructor. A couple of quick notes about destructors. Since they are a member function that executes automatically just before the object leaves memory, it would be pointless to pass arguments to the destructor. So you don't have parameter lists for destructors. It's, it would be pointless. So because of that, in addition, you're not going to be able to overload destructors because you will only ever have one possible parameter list, and that is an empty parameter list. So you can only have one destructor per class. And then we'll have a accessor and a mutator. So we'll have a set method here. It'll accept two integers, the index uh, for where we want to place the value within the array, and then the value itself. And that's simply going to set P of I to V. And this is a mutator. And then we're going to do get, which is simply going to access the array. And it's an accessor. We're going to have to mark this constant. And we're simply going to return P of I, right? So this is our accessor. So let's go ahead and test this thing. So we'll go ahead and instantiate an instance of the numbers class, and then we'll fill it with some values, right? So we'll just fill it with the square of I. So we'll do um, n dot set I and then the square of I. And then uh, we'll just print out the contents of it less than five, I plus plus, and then we'll do C out and dot get, and we'll put all in one line. All right, so let's go ahead and test that thing. All right, so you can see there are the values, zero, one, four, nine, and 16. Now you might be wondering, well, did the destructor actually execute? Well, let's take a look if it did or not. Let's see how we can see. We'll go ahead and place in the destructor Temporary little statement, see out statement. Um, now entering the destructor. And then um, we'll put a little temporary statement here. Now entering the constructor. Okay, and then uh, I'll make a little function here, void foo, and then we'll simply do all of this stuff from within our foo function. And uh, since this is declared inside of foo, it's going to get created when we call foo, right? It'll get created, do all that stuff. But then as soon as we leave foo, then the numbers object is going to go out of scope. Therefore, it's going to be destroyed. And therefore, it's going to trigger its destructor. So when we enter the function, 
we'll go ahead and say enter foo. Now entering foo. That'll instantiate the numbers object. We'll see that now entering the constructor output, it'll do its thing, initializing size and setting up the array. And then we'll do all of the things that we were gonna do with the array. And then as soon as we leave foo, right? So we'll say, um, see out now leaving foo. As soon as we leave it, then that object's gonna get destroyed. And that's gonna trigger the destructor to automatically execute. So we'll see this output here, and then it'll free up the memory that we dynamically allocated in the constructor. So we'll put a call into foo here, and then we'll try it out. Okay, so you can see now entering foo, and then uh, now entering the constructor for the class. And then we did our thing. We printed out the, we assigned all the values to the array that was created by the numbers object. Then we printed them all out. And then we printed out now leaving foo, right? Which is what happened right here. And then as soon as we left foo, the numbers object went out of scope. And when it did, it got destroyed. So once it got destroyed, then that destructor executed um, automatically. So that's how it works. Now this also works if you dynamically allocate an object. So we did static allocation here, right? This was statically allocated, statically allocated. Now, what if I come into here and I do something like numbers, uh, end pointer equals new numbers, right? That's gonna dynamically allocate a numbers object, dynamic memory. So as soon as I hit delete, that's what's going to cause the destructor to execute, right? So the new numbers here causes the constructor to execute. But when we do delete in pointer, that's going to cause the destructor to execute, okay, to execute. So let's check it out. So you can see now entering the constructor and then now entering the destructor, right? So that's exactly what you would expect because the constructor executes here and then the destructor executes here. So now you know how to use destructors in your C++ classes.